So, um, hi, I'm Jesse Sage, and this is When We're Not Hustling. We are talking about episode two with Miss Coda V, who is a Pittsburgh based dominatrix, which is always fun for me to have Pittsburgh folks on. And I am the host of When We're Not Hustling. I'm Emily Foster. I'm the producer of When We're Not Hustling. And uh, I loved this episode. I'm probably going to say that every time, but I can't <laughs> help it. Yeah, she's so delightful. She really is. I mean, just such a just a loving presence, mm -hmm. I, I think is how I would describe her. Like, yeah. I just want to kind of hang out with her. Uh, yeah, so I fun. did. I went and had lunch with her because she's <laughs> nice. in Pittsburgh. And right. it was so nice. And she's just as beautiful and amazing in person. It was Excellent. really... It was really funny that you say this because some, uh, I think a fan of mine or a client, I can't remember who said this said, Oh, I listened to that episode with Miss Coda V and she was so delightful that I'm trying to imagine her being a sadist who like beats me. And I can't <laughs> because she describes herself as a sadist. <laughs> yes. I mean, the best of them should be sweet and loving. Right. I mean, yeah. I'm a psychological horror fans so I kind of for me I'm like well yeah I mean if yeah. you were into that kind of thing you know it'd be yeah. even more more um <laughs> you know, <ooh. laughs> yeah you want somebody oh, to beat honey, you and then give her? you a hug and tell you you did a good <laughs> right. job that, that's yes. the kind of doming I need <laughs> right. I just um I think I enjoy the idea for like you know I don't know baking cookies while he's on the rack or something like oh honey do you need a little tightening <laughs> like, you know, it's like this. and she's so like like beautiful and like this presence too so you could just imagine Stately. her like, yeah yeah like yeah. queen like where you're just yeah like, yeah Yes, ma'am. Um, yeah. <laughs> and she's young. And that's why I think that's so like, I mean, she's not young, young, but she's late she's 20s, younger, early yeah. 30s. I don't yeah. know exactly how old she is. But um, so it's impressive to me to have that sort of like confidence and presence as a late 20s, early 30s woman. Well, I think that her experience um, just really largely, again, if you if you haven't seen the episode, highly recommend watching it before this it'll this they'll make a lot more sense if you've seen the episode but um, spoiler alert yeah um, her experience of having to separate herself from not just her religion but her entire town yeah and the way she described that her entire town is this same evangelical and yeah leaving the church was not just leaving this one group of people one community it was leaving everyone and everything she'd ever known and I think that mm -hmm. that's the kind of experience that just forges people you yeah. know I, I mm -hmm. think that that mm -hmm. sort of I, I would my mom used to call it a steel backbone and I just loved that like you oh, meet people like and you're that. like that lady's got a steel backbone do not mess with her <laughs> like it was how it was always presented to that. me yeah. and like mm -hmm. there's something in that where it's like oh yeah no she's She's not yeah, and I've seen anybody. some memes, and I wish I could remember the exact wording of it, but something to the extent of like, if you meet a woman who has that, there's a story behind it, you know? Yeah. You don't just get that. You have to go Our through Our society something. doesn't doesn't do that for us. Mm -hmm. Like, we mm -hmm. aren't we are invited to be that, you know, I was very lucky. I was raised by an amazing, strong single mom who was not taking anything off of anyone, and <laughs> yeah. I was raised to be that way, but- but also in a very, um, not very, but in a necessarily sort of combative way, like mm, mm -hmm. we are strong and proud because the world doesn't think we should be, you know, yeah. <laughs> like, it like was like it a was. political stance. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. It was. Yeah. No, my mm -hmm. mom's an OG hippie and yes, yeah. I was radicalized at birth. It was, um, you know, happily it yeah. happy, yeah. <laughs> but mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah, uh, definitely. It, it was not a, um, we don't raise uh, little assigned female people yeah. to be strong necessarily, or at least we didn't used to. I yeah. certainly hope that this, right. this newer generation is, I, yeah. the baby that I get to help caretake is definitely <laughs> being told she is strong. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you're so strong. You're so big. Makes me so happy when she's yeah. like, oh, you know, yeah. does that toddler strength thing. Oh, like, that's yeah. so cute. Like, yeah. <laughs> you're so big. Like, yeah. Um, yeah. 
Yeah, no. So she did. She had to leave her whole town. And the thing that I thought was interesting is that she grew up under evangelicalism, but she talks about the fact that she also grew up with a father who was a cop. So there was like the law right. of God and the law of the state. So she was like, grew up in this very, um, I mean, I would say oppressive. I don't know if she would use that word. I think authoritarian. Um, authoritarian is a better word. Yeah. Yeah. You know, not everyone feels oppressed under authoritarianism, but I sure would. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know. You I know, guess it depends on your personality. <laughs> there's a lot yeah. of comfort in rules, you know, yeah. going back to the, the dominatrix thing. <laughs> but, right. Mm -hmm. But for yeah. me, no. Um, no, right. I, I can't even imagine. And I got to tell you, the she, I actually cried at the end of this episode um, oh. because she's telling this story of, you know, I'm, I, I'm in the evangelical church. My dad is a cop. Yeah. And then Trump happened. Yeah. And my parents and the church were, and she had already left at this point. Yeah. But her parents were still in the church. And I'm hearing the story of my husband's parents, mm -hmm. uh, my, even my own mom, like, yeah, you know, and your mom didn't go to the Trump side. Did she? My mom doesn't vote because okay. she's very anti everything. Okay. But there was enough said during the last few years that we've agreed to stop talking about it. Wow. Mm -hmm. Um, there is a very uh, interesting yeah. like hippie <laughs> to all the way back to, through libertarianism back to conservatism that happens. The shared ideas that are currently out there between uh, mega conservatives and yeah. um, and people you would think of being very liberal. Yeah, it's it's a shockingly short circuit. People that it is. Uh, like I lost a lot of people during the pandemic. Um, yeah a couple of them to COVID, but most of them to a difference in ideals. Like yeah. it just, mm -hmm. it really, um, yeah, my yeah. decision to get vaccinated eliminated me from a lot of spaces that I'd always been welcomed in. Wow. And it was very interesting. I was yeah. like, oh, here too, huh? Wow. <laughs> yeah. Like, mm -hmm. yeah, it's, it's which uh, is just like, I guess I live in a bubble, but that's like, uh, you know, and I, I think I, I think that I do. I grew up in California. I grew up with kind of hippie parents. I moved around a lot. I Pittsburgh is the smallest city that I've lived in, um, which is funny right. because most people that live here. They're like, this is the biggest city I've lived in. Um, but, right. you, you know, um, and I think that's where that's that's where you nailed it. I think it's the city. Yeah. So, like, I also grew up in those hippie spaces, spent mm -hmm. a lot of time in California and Hawaii, my more liberal places than Pennsylvania. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but it's the rural areas. Yeah. To get some more interesting ideas. Um, yeah. So my, that, yeah. my partner's from the um, exurbs of, Pit of Pittsburgh. So outside of Pittsburgh. And right. when I say like, I don't understand how this is happening. PJ is like, I, I know exactly how this yeah, is. Yeah. Like, like I do. this isn't shocking to me <laughs> at all. Yeah. <laughs> and it's hard for me to wrap my head around. And they're like, it's not, I grew up in these spaces. Like it's, yeah, I mean, in the cities, in more urban areas, um, there's too many people. Mm -hmm. This is, this is a very personal observation <laughs> here. I, I don't, I don't, I'm not backing it with anything other than ideas. So I'm, I'm open <laughs> to being wrong here, but what I see is that there's so many people you can't have word of mouth really be a thing. So you yeah. have to trust trusted sources and mm -hmm. that pushes it into things like newspapers, for instance, let's just take yeah. a very outdated, but still used format, you know? And so <laughs> like you're in some cities, we, and, we have you know, a dwindling number of newspapers, right. here, but you know, <laughs> but Hey, I've heard, I, I love the written word. I, I'm, Me I'm too. pro yeah. paper, you know, I'm also pro digital, but let's keep those yeah. papers coming. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. So then you have to like sort of pick a person to do the the writing about things and then we all read what they wrote, right? So it, yeah. it forces it into a little more fact check space. Whereas in rural communities, what the outside world has to say is not as important as what our mm. neighbors have to say. What our yeah, neighbors have to say is 
very important to our everyday lives, whether that's in farming or yeah. the weather and the way that it's going to affect the land or, you know, when I was living in Hawaii, like how the new people moving into town are taking resources and they don't know how to share them back. You know, like yeah. there's mm -hmm. all of these concerns mm -hmm. that affect my day-to-day -day life much more than yeah. these important facts that you guys are oh, cool you know yeah. like Bessie the cow got out I don't care you know yeah like, yeah and that's and fair actually that, if you're right. looking at like from that perspective yeah so then when information happens right yeah. if your small community happens to have a already a belief system that mm -hmm. you know like rightfully so in a lot of cases like everyone who is brown and black I'm never going to tell you what you need to feel about medical care because your experience has been very different from mine I feel that for generations yeah. Yeah. for mm -hmm. generations and like yeah so there's a lot of, you know so say you have a really good reason to not trust things and then yeah what your neighbors say matters more yeah than what mm -hmm. the world has said and and it's so hard for me to criticize it because I've grown up in small communities and it yeah. does matter more. Like I yeah. need to know what my neighbor needs more than yeah. I need to know. But also having been raised to like really value education and to value yeah. scientific theory, and like, <laughs> I, you know, checking your ideas. Like right. I, I've learned to do both but and it's hard I, for me to see when how numbers we get of there. deaths become so high you're just like how are you not um vaccinated yeah sure because you know and because different information has been valued I'm gonna try and yeah. be as, mm -hmm. as forgiving as, and loving right. as I can because I everyone yeah. on this planet is more like me than not like me we're yeah. all humans yeah. like I really right. believe that and I yeah mm -hmm. I I've had some really interesting ideas in my life and I have yeah. current ideas that people think you're crazy and like yeah. mm -hmm. you know it's it, I have to make room for everyone to have their feelings but yeah mm -hmm. there's a lot of misinformation out there and there's a lot of people thriving on lying to people yeah. and then mostly there's just really well-meaning human beings who want to protect themselves and their families. Yeah. And mm -hmm. that misinformation seems to yeah, try, just hit mm -hmm. them right there. And it's yeah. really hard to mm -hmm. yeah. know everything you're saying has a basis in yeah. some logic. And I right. see that you're coming from a place of love and protection and, yeah. and yet I feel completely completely different than you yeah. and I really feel like you're totally <laughs> endangering me and like ah yeah yeah <laughs> like it's, yeah it's but I I do have a lot of a lot of understanding for how small communities yeah reject what seems like very logical ideas because yeah. there's been a lot of lies you know yeah. I, I was a a young gay during the 80s I watched yeah. our government and our CDC lie to everyone and and yeah. wage war against gays and just killed them yeah just all of them you know yeah. anyone they could and like that happened in my lifetime I watched it happen right. you know like yeah, yeah so absolutely yeah I can you know and that's one of many atrocities and and I'm right. not a government hater I'm not like big governments trying to do it. it's like I can't even imagine trying to freaking run that country to scale of, of the millions United of States. people yeah. I, just, I don't cheese <laughs> like yeah. All my ideas come from armchair where I'm managing a tiny family. Like, I yeah. don't know. Yeah. I don't think anyone, <laughs> you know, but there was yeah. some, there were yeah. some atrocities done. Like yeah. our government has committed a lot of atrocities. Right. And mm -hmm. for someone to say, I don't trust what they say to me is, uh, it's very hard for me to be like, oh no, you totally should. <laughs> 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 right. I get that. Well, yeah. You know, yeah. And I know we're kind of, we're kind of rambling here and getting off track, but the whole point of this, where I was coming from is like, so many people are telling mm -hmm. the story of, I lost my parents to yeah. something that happened in the right. last eight years, like yeah. over the last mm -hmm. eight years, a lot yeah. of people have lost their parents. Yeah. And, um, my parents are still living, but they have lost them. And so, yeah. Mm -hmm. And Miss Coda told a story that went the other way. Yeah. She, her parents mm -hmm. were started to get into it. And then she talked to them and yeah. they asked her input. And 
and they left as yeah. they're crying. I was like, oh my God, <laughs> she, got, <laughs> she got her parents. Like she didn't lose them. Like yeah. I was so sure I knew where that story was going and that is not where it went. And it was yeah. like, oh, like, you yeah. know, there's, um, it was really, really a touching story for me. Um, yeah. In so many ways. And yeah. And such amazing, like we've talked about her strength and and the strength of anyone who leaves yeah. a community for mm -hmm. any reason, for mm -hmm. any reason, you know, mm -hmm. but religion's a big one. It's a big one yeah. that people leave. And, but also what struck me over and over was both of you, you've both been in, been in religion and are not currently practicing. Yeah. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. there was nothing but love mm. for everyone mm -hmm. who still was and yeah. the concept of it and the reality of it. There was no, um, you know, which really echoes a similar yeah. way. It's like, I, 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 I understand there's a lot of religious trauma in this world. My husband suffers from so much of it. I yeah. cannot. So does mine. Like, I will yeah. not criticize it. Like religion, if, if yeah. our government is committed atrocity as well. Yeah. Like, yeah, right. they are behind religion I believe yeah. um, but also it's community and we're social animals and mm -hmm. so many people survive today because yeah. of it that mm -hmm. it's so um, you know it's so it's, yeah uh, I heard Nick Cage <laughs> on a different um, Nick Cave on a different uh, podcast and he was talking about why he is and I loved this not spiritual, but religious. Um, mm -hmm. so like loves the, the community of like religion right. going into a place, the aesthetics of religion, all of this, he plays, you know, the and ritual, has, but yeah, and yeah. has had a lot of tragedy in his life. Two of his sons have died. And, um, one of the things that he said in the interview that I, it was on, um, Krista Tippett's on being that I like loved is he said, you know, I will not, I am not a believer. You know, I go to church as a non-believer. I'm not really a believer, but there's no way that I would tell people not to believe because it's like, even when people say like, oh, religion is a crutch or like Mark said, religion is the opium of the people, right. blah, blah, blah. He's like, yeah, but imagine having a handicap and put like making somebody throw their cane away or their crutch away. Like then what? Yes. What do you replace that with? Right. And that to me was like such a compassionate response to like, okay, so maybe I think it's hocus pocus nonsense. What else do we have? Like what, right. <laughs> we can't just decide to take that away from people because they, we think it's stupid or we think it's done some harm because for the people who still believe right. or who still are get, they're still getting something out of it that Absolutely. they need. No. And when you pose that question to people, well, okay. You eliminate you eliminate religion. Mm -hmm. No one believes in God anymore. Mm -hmm. Where do people meet regularly to see other people? Yeah. Where do people get their food? Where do people meet during a right. when there's like a um a disaster? Where do we yeah. gather? You know, and you start asking these these questions. Yeah. You're like, here are all these vacuums that now exist. Right. And what's always interesting to me is when you press people in that way, the answer comes out almost exactly what most churches are yeah mm -hmm. and so even when you remove the, the religion from church yeah just let's just pretend it magically disappeared in this <laughs> yeah amazing yeah. theoretical space i think we would still very much have gathering places where we would tell stories and those yeah. stories would be inspirational and touching yeah. and yeah. would inspire us to be better people yeah and, we would, you know, we would still do all of these things. We would still gather when there was, right. you know, mm -hmm. um, weddings or funerals yeah. and we would still, and babies and, yeah. and food and, you know, it, <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's a lot of, there's a lot there and it's messy right. to talk about church without acknowledging all of that you know yeah like mm -hmm. and I, I love that I love that Nick Cave's amazing that interview was amazing like yeah no it not was. that Krista Timmett needs the plug but she's incredible and you should definitely check it out <laughs> okay I am a fangirl <laughs> of Krista Tippett and everybody that follows me knows this <laughs> she isn't exactly wanting for the plug but just in case just like, in case we're if you want to know fans, how, how I've been influenced in the world listen to Krista Tippett <laughs> 
<laughs> and then you'll be like, okay, all right. I see why Jesse does this weird show. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. But yeah, um, I love that. And you know what else I yeah. really loved about her interview is, um, you know, spoiler alert, I love where it ended on like doing, finding the power within herself to, yes. um, instead of looking toward religion or looking toward something outside of her, like re focusing the gaze back on her own power. And that was, yeah. that was inspirational to me. Definitely. Yeah. No, I came out of, I came out of, um, our very first interview feeling like full, like mm-hmm. I had eaten an amazing meal, but I came out of, I came out of miss kota's with like some fire in me it was like yeah 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 Yeah. i was satisfied but also riled up yeah (laughs) that's a great place to end so if you have not go listen to when we're not hustling episode two which you can find anywhere you find podcasts including on this youtube channel thanks for listening don't forget to like and subscribe that's a thing we're supposed to do oh that is a thing we're supposed to say (laughs)